A strange sphere has been discovered in orbit around Mars, and the spacecraft Achilles is sent to investigate it. But when the team arrives at the site, they discover that the Earth government, trying to solve the problem of overpopulation, has decided to send 15 billion people into a black hole. Carla Gray remembered the evening with her mother and daughter when her mother told the story of five people in a boat drifting in the ocean with enough food and water to survive for three people. And how do you decide who lives and who dies? Carla didn't know why her mother told her that, and a couple of hours later her mother and daughter died in a car accident. Eventually Carla joins a space expedition on the Achilles ship. One day she comes out of hibernation urging one of the newcomers, Cy Rubin, to rest longer. The first space sleep is very tiring, but the man remains silent. Later it turns out that Cy is a blogger with a huge audience which causes ridicule from the male part of the crew. But Cy is pleased. The interest in the expedition is very high. Finally, the crew can observe the object of their research, a black sphere recently found in orbit around Mars. Carla begins her initial investigation but doesn't understand the meaning of the data obtained. The ship's scanners can see through the planet but cannot determine what is inside the sphere. Cy describes everything he sees around while Officer Ulf changes the used core in the engine. At that moment, Director Vance comes on the line, reminding that the whole world is waiting for the news about the mysterious sphere and is watching the actions of the Achilles crew. People are dispersing to their cabins, but as Carla walks down the corridor, she suddenly hears her mother's voice. The woman is in communication with Vance. The director is concerned about her well-being as she recently lost her family. At that moment, the communication is interrupted. The ship's AI reports a temporary spatial anomaly originating from the sphere. The ship's systems are damaged and communication channels are not functioning. However, life support systems and engines are operating nominally. Therefore, the ship can move towards the sphere, where a sudden bright light appears, as if indicating the direction of flight. At this moment, the data processing systems are restored, and Carla receives a message from the sphere. One word is repeated endlessly, and that word is Deus, which means God. Then, frightened Psy comes in and asks to turn the ship back, but the captain insists on following the order and starting the exploration of the sphere immediately. Carla finds Sai crying, claiming that they cannot go there as it is punishment. He hears voices calling him and shouting about danger. People remember their loved ones who are true believers, but they are fearless explorers, and why did God appear now? After all, God is the judge of humanity. In the end, people come to the decision that they need to find out what it is. If it is not God, they can just blow up the sphere, although the Achilles is not a military ship. The captain strongly prohibits discussions about explosions. The countdown before landing begins, and then Carla hears her daughter's cries, while Sai writhes in agony and goes to the lower deck. Tess discovers Sai's disappearance and goes to find him. Ulf and Carla follow suit. The couple heads down but separates in different directions. Meanwhile, Tess makes her way to the lower deck and sees Sai standing in a pentagram made of burning light bulbs and carving strange symbols on his body. Carla hears the woman's screams, rushes to help, and finds Tessa's bloodied body, with Sai standing over her, armed with a knife. The woman tries to compose herself, but in the next moment, Ulf hears her screams. He runs to the scene and finds Sai holding Carla, with a knife pressed to her throat. The officer tries to calm the blogger down, telling him that they can resolve everything peacefully, but Sai talks again about sins and demands that the ship turn around. At that moment, there is a gunshot. The captain approaches Sai from behind, unnoticed. Thus, the mission has only just begun, and two of the crew members are already dead. Carla is convinced that the captain knows something about the sphere, but he denies it, reminding her that she's an astronaut and has always dealt with the unknown. And billions of people on Earth are waiting for a solution to the mystery from her. But Carla doesn't understand why the captain doesn't even try to find out what happened to Sai and Tess and insists on visiting the sphere as soon as possible. Soon, Carla visualizes a strange structure on the surface. Director Vance contacts them with the message that over 10,000 similar portals leading to God have appeared on the surface of the Earth. This looks like an invasion that no one can explain. The origin and purpose of the structures remain a mystery. Apparently, the key remains in the sphere, and they must find it. Carla, Alf, and Sean carefully check their spacesuits before heading to the surface. 
They inspect the soil, which is unlike any known material. Suddenly, a bright light similar to gates and dark rocks appears ahead. They approach it, and using a searchlight rocket, discover a tall obelisk with a symbol carved into it, which means event horizon or boundary of existence. Carly's convinced that the gates are made of the same material as the sphere, but where do they lead? At that moment, they begin to hear sounds despite being in vacuum. Then a woman appears before them, claiming to speak on behalf of the Creator, who is the beginning and end of all things, and came to warn and help. Those who pass through the gates will return to eternal rest. And Carla was sent here to share the truth with the people, for beyond the gates lies relief from suffering. Those who refuse to pass through the gates will perish, as the sphere, once it reaches Earth, will become the most destructive weapon, causing the planet to cease to exist in an instant. Those who pass through will find what they lost. Suddenly, Carla sees her mother instead of the woman, and then herself right after the accident. Ahead of her is a golden field with a wonderful city on the horizon, and her laughing daughter running towards her. Carla runs towards her daughter, but the next moment she finds herself on the laboratory table. Her body is convulsing and it is difficult for her to come to. The captain and Ulf are beside her, telling her about the death of the third officer. She passed through the gates but then lost consciousness and they barely carried her out. At that moment Vance comes on the line, the world is waiting for her answer. Carla tells about the golden plain and the city resembling the new Jerusalem. She ran towards the city but she doesn't remember what happened next. Vance advises her to rest but she can't calm down. What happened to Sean? Ulf explains that his space is suddenly tore, and they couldn't do anything. Carly intends to return to the sphere, but Ulf says they are planning to leave. The couple leaves the infirmary, and in the corridor, where there are no cameras, Ulf stops Carla. For some reason, Vance thinks she's hiding something. Meanwhile, the captain tries to eavesdrop on their conversation, but without success. Carla confesses to Ulf that she saw her family. They were in a coma, had been treated for a long time, and suddenly she saw them. And she is sure that both the captain and Vance know about it and wanted her to confess it on camera. The AI reports that the Achilles will leave the sphere's orbit in half an hour when the captain tries to get the truth from Ulf about what Carla told him. The man denies his knowledge but the captain insists and reminds him of his mission. Meanwhile, Carla goes to the hibernation pods to investigate Sean's remains but can't open the doors. She breaks into the captain's quarters where she finds weapons and documents. She meets Ulf in the corridor, intending to find out the real purpose of the expedition. He's a Marine, a member of an elite unit with a bunch of awards, so what is he doing on the ship? The man says that his task is to preserve peace and he knows nothing about the sphere that she would know as she has passed through the gates. Carla leads him to the captain who surely knows the truth. Sean was killed. She saw the spacesuit. The captain insists that she tell the truth. At that moment, Van's hologram appears. He believes that she saw paradise. But Carla doesn't believe it and thinks that his mercenary is ready to kill her. But Vance doesn't understand why he would harm Carla specifically. In addition, people began to make their own choices. With these words, Vance shows earthly analogs of the gates where people are flocking. Carla is distracted by the video and the captain attacks her and wounds her in the side. The woman kills him. Ulf calmly watches what's happening. He is on Carla's side and ready to take the ship wherever she says. He also wants to know the truth. The man treats her wound. Carla wants to return to the sphere, but the AI is controlled by Vance. Ulf reminds her that it's enough to enter the code. They will be able to shut down the main engine and still return to Earth, albeit after many years. Carla summons Vance, who understands her desire but discourages her. He tried to give the world a god and now she can take the creator's place. The sphere consists of self-generating material that can construct buildings according to a predetermined plan. This is how Achilles was created. And while Ulf makes his way to the engine, Vance begins to tell her about the beautiful planet at the center of the Milky Way. But people appeared and the planet began to die. 21 billion people are crammed into 15% of the habitable land surface. And if the human race is not destroyed, the planet will perish. Carla understands that those who pass through the gates on Earth will meet their death, convinced of their meeting with God, but they will end up in a black hole. So Vance is ready to destroy 15 billion in order to save 6 billion, they will die painlessly. Carla remembers the woman's words at the gate, the sphere will destroy Earth, but Vance denies it. The sphere will self-destruct upon reaching the planet, by which time billions will have already perished. 
But Carla saw her loved ones, didn't she? Vance also has an answer to that. After the accident, they implanted a chip in her head that allows them to see and hear anything they want. Carla becomes furious. They killed her family and spent two years preparing her for this flight. And she tells Vance the story of her mother about people in a boat. But this story will end differently. Those people could have gone fishing, found an island, or met a ship. Nobody knows what the ocean will bring. Everyone deserves their future. And Vance is just a monster. Ulf reports that he removed the core, but Vance orders the AI to initiate self-destruct. Carla asks Ulf to come back, but he realizes that it will be in vain. Vance reminds them that the AI will not let them detach the lower deck, and tries to persuade Carla to help him one last time. But she cannot allow herself to play God. And then Vance bids her farewell, his second greatest creation. Carla shoots his hologram. Ulf carries the core to the transport and asks for the code to detach a part of the ship. But he realizes that he won't make it back to Carla. She refuses to believe it. She watches as the lower deck explodes and then a part of the ship detaches. And then she hears Ulf's voice who managed to escape with the detachable part after all. Later, the couple rests from their work, and the man confesses, this is not all. The core can only be detonated manually from the surface of the sphere, and he did not know about Van's plans. Carly informs him of her intention to go with him, and the man agrees. But before leaving, he arranges for the woman to stay in the closed part of the airlock. He asks her to return to Earth and tell the whole truth about the sphere. After that, he goes out onto the surface of the sphere and closes the outer door. Crying, Carla watches as he brings the core to the surface. Her module rises into the sky as Ulf watches her go. And then the sphere explodes. Carla promises to meet him on the other side, listening to the countdown. The ship will return to Earth in seven years and eight months. And that's where the movie ends.